Dear friends, a very good afternoon to you all. I'm pleased to extend my warmest greetings and welcome to everyone participating in the premiere of BAPU Documentaries. Now, in its 25th year of existence, BAPU has established itself as a premier professional organization, drawing doctors not just from Indian origin, but also from other parts of the world. And I'm sure this afternoon is going to be extremely inspiring and entertaining. It has been a challenging year, to say the least, and COVID pandemic has brought a lot of uncertainties. And we were lucky to have face-to-face -face Silver Jubilee Conference uh, in October, but maybe our luck ran out and we had to resort to virtual uh, conference or virtual launch of BAPIO documentaries. And therefore, the organizers need a big round of applause and thanks for the hard work. It is a blessing that amongst audience this afternoon are members who have lived uh, as victims of uh, discrimination, unfair practices, and those who know for a fact that discrimination is so much more than this journey of BAP you can capture. This afternoon, we will see a documentary that paints a picture of how BAP you, uh, started and captures the contribution of all those present today. But before, we come to documentary, it is important to hear from horse's mouth. That is our founder, our founder of BAPU and our president, Dr. Ramesh Mehta, OBE, who is going to tell us how it all started, what are the challenges he faced, and how he has managed to bring BAPU to where it is now. A big round of applause for Dr. Ramesh Mehta. Parag, thank you very much. You've been very kind, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon from foggy and cold Bedford. This foggy, foggy and cold weather probably explains how we are feeling with invasion of Omicron in our lives. We were hoping that things were getting better. We were mixing. We had an excellent face-to-face annual conference with over 400 people there. What a wonderful time we had. And we were hoping to have good Christmas. However, we are proposing and Omicron is disposing. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. Anyway, we have to face the situation. From our point of view, we hope that all of you have had booster. All of you are keeping well. And you are looking after yourselves. Those who are working in primary and secondary care and those who are facing the patients with COVID, I hope that you have got proper equipment, you got proper PPEs, and you are being looked after properly as well. If you need any support or any help, please feel free to contact us. Now, coming back to this uh, premiere, which we were hoping to do it live again in the theater, Omicron has interrupted. <laughs> but never mind. We hope that many more will be able to watch the documentaries for which a lot of our members have taken huge amount of trouble and enjoy and see how Bapio has moved over 25 years. When I look back 25 years ago, it's amazing that we have come already a long way. When we started, in our mind, we had just two principles. We wanted to make sure that there is equality for all our members and all the doctors. And the second principle we had was commitment to the National Health Service. Both those principles have continued with us for last 25 years. However, in the beginning, we thought how we are going to follow these principles. And to do that, we thought of four pillars on which BAPIO strategy stood. These four pillars 
are the the first one is influencing the policy of the establishment. I am really proud to say that that in spite of us being a voluntary organization of doctors, we have managed to influence the policies of the government, the establishment, the royal colleges very effectively. Whenever we thought things were not working out, we were able to stand up to the establishment and we were brave enough to challenge the establishment. You will see that in the documentary. I don't need to explain that to you. Our second pillar was to ensure that our members and our colleagues have proper education and training so that they are able to provide the best patient care, the professional excellence and the clinical excellence. I'm really pleased that we have expanded our training and education team with three arm's length organizations. We started off with BAPIO Training Academy. We have Medical Defense Shield. And now we also have BAPIO Institute for Health Research. In addition to that, recently we also have BAPIO Faculty for leadership. Friends, this is to ensure that our doctors, our members, and all our colleagues become professionally competent and show leadership as well. Other video. Our third, our third pillar is supporting doctors in difficulty. And that's where we, our mentorship programs, our pastoral care programs, our medical differential comes in. And finally, we thought we would also ensure that we do charitable work in the healthcare sector throughout the world, not just in the UK. I'm really pleased that we've been doing it at any disaster areas in the world, whether it was in India or Pakistan or in Africa, we were there. During recent COVID crisis in India, you may recollect that we raised over half a million pound worth of equipments and support systems to provide the charity. So with that brief, I look forward to watching the documentary of the journey of Bapio with you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mehta. Uh, you are a true visionary, and what you have achieved is incredible, and it's an inspiring journey for all of us. Uh, everybody looks to be appropriately dressed for the occasion, and this premiere is no less than Hollywood or Bollywood. Uh, <laughs> so it's fantastic. Once again, a very warm welcome to all of you. I would now like to bring Dr. Amit Gupta, consultant pediatrician at Oxford Hospital, who has been brains behind this whole idea of trying to create documentary. And I'm not sure how, uh, despite being so busy, he has managed to do this. So let us hear from uh, directly from Amit Gupta's uh, voice what exactly he has done. He's a valued member of BAPIO and member of executive committee. Amit, a warm welcome. Warm welcome. Thank you very much, Parag, and, and thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Mehta. Um, Dr. Mehta has laid down what this documentary is about. It was very important. 25 years, a long journey, lots of struggles, and lots of um, joys, disappointments, and victories. And um, I think that struggle, those, those uh, personal stories, needed to be captured for posterity. Not only to document what's happened in the past 25 years, but also to inspire the next generation. So uh, this was an idea put together uh, some time ago. And um, I, I wouldn't say much more uh, because you will see the documentary. But I hope 
what will touch you are the human stories because that is what drives us to do what we do despite our uh, busy schedules as full time doctors and nurses we take time energy to support and help our colleagues and um, if it were not for uh, those personal stories um uh, we we you know this would be um this would be just another organization which could be very dry but we are driven by passion and emotion and you will you will see that coming through in the documentary so hope you'll enjoy this it was just a normal day i came here to, this is my brand surgery so i came here to, uh, to pick up imran who used to be my caretaker for the surgery so i just parked my car there and i just walked around and uh, opened the door and then in my second door there's a little glass um and i looked through the glass and uh, to my shock dr imran used he was just hanging uh, in the stairs and i was really really shocked at the time he was such a brilliant chap uh, who came from pakistan and uh, to do job here and he had to pass his blood test which he did and he was looking for the job dr imran yusuf a 28 year old doctor from pakistan like many thousands of doctors had come in response to an advert by the uk government inviting overseas medics to work with the nhs hopes crashed when rules were changed retrospectively the department of health decided to give priority to doctors from the uk and the eu over everyone else no job and mounting debts for dr yusuf future looked bleak the last blow came when his visa extension was denied dr yusuf committed suicide on the 19th of january 2007 next to his body right here in this surgery a letter from the home office refusing him an extension to stay in the uk was found suddenly for to find him such a brilliant doctor to find him hanging it was heartbreaking dr basra is still haunted by the day so is bapio british association of physicians of indian origin founded in 1996 by dr ramesh mehta to stand and speak for overseas doctors especially of indian origin and for anyone who knocked their doors At the time, Bapio was supporting Dr. Yusuf. Imran's death actually made us wake up to the fact that whatever we were doing wasn't good enough, because we tried to extend all possible help to Imran, and we had to rethink our strategies. Imran's tragic story made Dr. Mehta relive the days when he arrived in the UK in 1981. It took him back to the time and reasons that instigated him to start Bapio. I wasn't finding a job. I had to find support because I didn't have enough resources. I had to stay with my friend Dr. Kathane for a long time. And all that while I was thinking and all that reminded me I was also thinking of how we can assist other people who are going through the similar situation that i myself in 1981 when i came went through and people still are struggling to find the right place in the national health service dr kathane and dr mehta go a long way in 1971 when thousands of refugees from bangladesh poured into india on dr mehta's behest Dr. Kathane along with a team of like-minded young doctors 
volunteered at the refugee camps. Having witnessed Dr. Mehta's commitment and passion to social causes, it did not take much convincing from Dr. Kathane for fellow doctors to open their doors to Bapio. I remember I had hosted um, a welcome home party for him in my back garden and uh, over there I invited many of my friends who were in Bedford. I introduced Ramesh to all these people and said here is a really good chap you need to know him and so that was the, the, the very first stage of formation of Bapio. It is a, a doctor's association for the benefit of doctors. So for this good cause, I joined. Well, Bapio didn't have any money at all. And um, we just raised it actually through sponsorship from the medical reps. Asked all the doctors to, um, to ask their spouses actually to make some food. So everybody was making one dish per doctor. So uh, for example, 10 doctors, 10 dishes and we saved actually that way and whatever actually money we got from the medical rep that was all for the Bapio for the good causes actually. Dr. Mehta and I we uh, arranged some cricket games I particularly from different backgrounds arranging cultural programs uh, like Diwali and other programs to sell the tickets uh, and save the profit which, which used to go to uh, Bapio other four things which have served Bapio very well is samosa, pakoda, cricket and Bollywood. The idea of Bapio was conceived in Dr. Mehta's living room, right here. And from here, it travelled to the living rooms of doctors who formed the core group. On the principles of diversity, equality and justice, finally, four pillars of Bapio were formulated. First pillar of BAPIO is to influence government policies. Second pillar of BAPIO is education, training and equal opportunity for all. Third pillar of BAPIO is helping doctors in difficulty. Fourth pillar of BAPIO is charity and support in disaster. While BAPIO was conceived and born in my living room, in my house, it actually grew in this place. In 1993, I joined this hospital, the Bedford Hospital, and I was part of planning and designing the building you see behind me, the mother and child unit, which also was inaugurated by Her Majesty the Queen in 1996, the year. Bapio was launched. Bapio grew in numbers and size, but the first real test came with the 2006 case, the seeds of which were sown in early 2000 when the UK government invited overseas doctors through advertisements. The one that tempted Dr. Imran Yusuf to come to the UK and many others, including Dr. Achutan Sajayan. Like myself, many people got an impression that there were lots of jobs in this country at that time. But the reality was different. There were lots of people living in crowded conditions, uh, living off food from the temples and gurudwaras, and people who have passed PLAB, fully qualified and postgraduate qualified doctors from India struggling to get a job in this country. The PLAB test is taken by overseas doctors to work in the UK, but it does not guarantee jobs, even today. The advert attracted doctors. Soon, supply superseded demand. Despite paying and passing the PLAB test, overseas doctors in thousands remained jobless. The British government changed the goalposts, brought in new rules and applied them retrospectively. Doctors from the UK and the EU were given preference in jobs irrespective of qualifications, talent or experience. Even 
the visa requirements were altered. The jobs used to come in six month blocks. The so normal process is during that time you apply for the next job and you extend your visa. But there is no visa to extend it. So I remember you know, sitting one day in the middle of uh, a small place in Yorkshire uh, thinking I can't extend my visa uh, because I don't have a job offer. And the reason why I don't have a job offer is because no such visa exists. So you are in a catch-22. So your only option is then to uh, throw away all your ambition and take up a dead-end job which needs a different kind of visa. This is the trap that doctors like Imran Yusuf found themselves in. They came on an invitation, spent time, energy and money passing all the licensing exams but were left without a job and were finally told to leave the country. Indebted, tired, frustrated and no careers to go back to. Bapio became their voice. I felt very strongly about this injustice. I could do nothing about it on my own. And these were the only group who seemed to be trying to do something. You know, because I'd gone to the Nigerian doctors groups, I'd gone to every other group I, I knew of. And, you know, they all said, oh, yes, it's, it's terrible, but, you know, you've got to keep your head down in this society. And I just thought, no, you know, you can't, because this is wrong. We were invited to Chatham House. In this meeting, one of the postgraduate dean said that we have to stop the tap. What he meant was we must stop overseas people coming in this country and taking the training post. And this was a great concern for me. And when I went back and we had discussion with our members, we were extremely worried. To begin with, we spoke to the government. We wrote to majority of the MPs in all the constituencies. We used the services of media. We even managed to put in an early day motion through Austin Mitchell in the parliament. We spoke to the then health minister and none of this, uh, or actually I would say, all this fell on deaf ears. And we felt quite dejected. And uh, that is why we had no choice other than to file a case in the High Court. It was very disappointing when the initial court uh, said, mm, no, you don't have a case. Uh, but we didn't give up. And I think, uh, you know, again, it is at those moments of time where it would have been easy to say, actually, we've lost in court, we don't have any money of our own, and uh, we just should give up and go. But uh, we didn't. Um, you know, I really uh, think that Bapio stood up for itself. And uh, we had a fantastic QC who was advising us, uh, uh, Mr. Singh. And uh, he said, no, you know, I think there's a chance and we can appeal on this behalf and we can go ahead on these grounds. So it was seminal when we were given permission to appeal to the House of Lords, which was the Supreme Court at the time. At the appeal stage, Bapio won. It was no small victory. On the day that we won, I just felt this sense of, I mean, you know, we're little people taking on the big British institutions and everybody had written us off. No one thought we could get, go anywhere with this. And we had won. But I also remembered Imran, and I wished he was alive to see that day. I had the feeling of elation that I never felt before, just like having five times of beer. I felt that um, this is a watershed moment for all six doctors in the UK, and that this decision would have far-reaching positive influence on our careers and how we were perceived by the system. I was ecstatic. We took the British government to court and we won. At, it is at this moment that I realized there is still some fairness left in the system. One of the important result of this victory was acceptance by doctors at large in the whole country that there is an organization which is able to stand up to injustice. 
stand up for equality, stand up for inclusion. And that moment, Bapu became a big name. And that was the beginning of huge expansion for Bapu. From humble beginnings, Bapu expanded around the country. Many divisions and forums were set up. We now have over 13 divisions of Bapio across the United Kingdom. These include three national divisions in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland where health is a devolved matter. And in addition, we have a number of regional divisions covering various regions like Southwest, Southeast and so on. It's very important for the divisions to function cohesively because they act as the eyes and ears of Bapio. To meet the needs of specialities and subspecialities, forums like Pediatric, GP, SAS LED were formed. I think it's important to understand that you can have a central point like Bapio, but then each of them, uh, within it, there are so many subspecialities, there are so many talented people in Bapio and there are some who need a lot of different expertise like uh, safety advice or for career progression and I think uh, that is where the need came in 2005 and we've now got about 10 uh, forum. About 30% of our doctor population is consists of SAS and LED forum so that uh, are most of them are either overseas graduates and um, they're non-training but they are experienced people they are hard working and they are not the one which sitting on the deck uh, of a ship but they are the one sitting in the boiler and running the ship in addition to those that cater to specialities there are forums for young doctors women and for doctors well-being as a whole as well being doctors, it's very, very difficult to make any additional time during that nine to five working hours. And uh, your main focus is patients and the work when you're in the hospital. So it's really important that we have something to connect socially and uh, uh, for the emotional needs that we have such sessions conducted out of hours, that is in the evenings or in the weekends, so that we can all uh, look after ourselves. Launched on the 1st of March 2010, Medical Defence Shield provides comprehensive cover for both employment and professional defence. This arm of BAPIO delivers on its promise to protect the medics through conflict resolution and provide legal defence. We knew that the professional other organisations traditionally were not helping international doctors because they didn't quite understand the sensitivities. Uh, and the cultural ethos and they weren't very personal and occasionally they would have conflicts of interest. I think just the sense that we've actually helped people uh, negotiate very difficult procedures, processes, legal challenges and pitfalls and save their careers and in event you know save their own personal lives but then also impacted patient care because these doctors are now working and helping this country you know it, it's quite an amazing feeling that actually you were a little part of the journey. BAPU Training Academy is the training and education arm of the organization that delivers on one of its crucial promise of strategic approach to promote professional and clinical excellence. It is open to all healthcare workers. India produces 85,000 doctors but hardly 35,000 managed to get into postgraduate training programs. Whilst UK, on the other hand, uh, continues to face significant workforce crisis. So what we did was, with this unique, innovative, first of its kind Indo-UK program, we literally built a bridge between the two countries, produced a training program, which will not only benefit the trainees, bringing the clinical medicine back to focus, making them fine clinicians, but we have also introduced a bespoke MBA in healthcare management and leadership. So after four years of training, these trainees will not only be fine clinicians, but will also be fine leaders.
Slowly and steadily, Bapio was developing into a bigger and stronger organization. And just then came yet another litmus test. So in October 2010, uh, I got uh, this bad news from RCGP saying that uh, Dr. Mascara, this is going to be your last attempt to take the exam. So, uh, so that's my membership exam for to qualify as a general practitioner in UK. So my heart just sank because if I didn't pass the exam, my career was over. I was having training in Aberdeen at that time and there were around 12 to 13 of my colleagues of Indian origin having the similar problem and we all were given this ultimatum of last attempt. Passing CSA is the route to becoming a GP in the UK. The rule is that if a trainee doctor fails the exam four times, they are disbarred from taking it again. Differences were found in the pass rates between the white and BAME origin trainees. Medics from overseas were 15 times more likely to fail the exam. Trainees who could not pass their CSA exams had their careers blocked. But was this fair? Uh, we thought this cannot be right. And once um, we said we are going to fight it, the complexity of the legal case was amazing. In the end, I remember with the solicitors, uh, Linda Myers at that time, we ended up collecting around 18 um, folders of bundles of caseworks, of, of, of statements from various doctors um, and all the evidence which went behind it. And that is the time when we started defining unconscious bias. Bapio took the Royal College of General Practitioners and the General Medical Council responsible for conducting the CSA exams to court in February 2013. Bapu argued that this exam was racially discriminatory. A three-day trial in April of 2014 was held in the Royal Court of Justice. The judge concluded that there was no evidence to suggest that the exam was discriminatory. In legal terms, we did lose, but the conscious stricken judge had to say, if Bapio brought this case back in a year's time, you will have a case to answer. He warned the Royal College uh, that you will have a case to answer if Bapio brought back this case. And he also said that Bapio has won a moral victory. We, had, By this time, Bapio has grown well that we had our own team of solicitors and MDS, and we were not willing to take this uh, uh, lying down. So. All the traditional organizations have now started thinking about a conscious as, as well as unconscious discrimination. The pass rate, unfortunately, in spite of all the work we have been doing, continues to be as bad as it has been. However, that doesn't stop us from doing something to sort this out. Now, over the last one year, more than 150 of our doctors voluntarily have been working on the effect of what we call differential attainment. So differential pass rate is only one part of differential attainment of ethnic minority doctors. So we are just about to publish the report and we are hoping that we will use our influence of the 10 solutions that we are providing should eventually, gradually change. Impact on junior doctors is not limited to exams, but also has implication on patient care at the cold face of medicine. A case that exemplifies this is that of Dr. Hadija Baba Garva. On the 18th of February 2011, a six-year-old child Jack Adock was admitted to the Leicester Royal Infirmary. Later in the day, he died of septic shock following a mistaken diagnosis of gastroenteritis. Junior doctor on duty that day was Dr. Hadija Bhava Garba. She was on a 12-hour shift covering several wards in the absence of her supervisor. The IT system was also under the weather that day. On 17th of April 2012, Dr. Baba Garva was cleared and the case was closed. 
But in July 2013, during the inquest, the coroner ordered for the case to be reopened. On 18th of December 2018, Dr. Baba Garba was charged with gross negligence manslaughter. I'm not sure I even have words to describe what I felt. Um, yeah, and, and then having those handcuffs on my hands, I think that also sort of did something, you know. I, I, I don't know if I even have the words to describe how it felt to be found guilty and then to have handcuffs on my hand. I, I almost felt like I had to make a choice in this place whether I'm going to sink or swim. And then I knew that although I'm in this cell and 10 people felt that I was guilty, I needed to decide what I believed, not what they're telling me. Not in 2011, when Jack sadly passed away, but much later, it occurred to the GMC to cancel Dr. Hadija Baba Garva's license to practice. All of a sudden, I felt tired, so I just thought, because it was just draining, it was a heavy verdict. So I just thought, I'm going to sleep and set, set my alarm to go and pick the children up from school and just sleep it off. And I slept. And when I woke up, I was just shocked because it was like the, all of the medical field, the, all, everybody had woken up, you know. It was just the I am Hadiza movement that started. And I was really humbled by that. This was a doctor who was put in the middle of a failing system, who was not supported by her seniors, who was not supported by her trust, and who was absolutely let down by her defense organization, to the extent that she managed to have a criminal conviction um, and was on the verge of losing her license, her livelihood, all the years that she'd done. And this story just absolutely touched a chord in us. Dr. Baba Garwa's case resonated with the pressures that junior doctors work under. Close to 100,000 was collected through crowdfunding in moments. BAPIO along with other organizations took the GMC to court. The GMC lost the case. Dr. Hadija Baba Garwa's license was reinstated. Our support to Hadija and the outcome of that case has assured these junior doctors that they can do their best for the patient care without concern about the system failures that was very common in the hospitals. Encouraged with several wins, BAPIO entered yet another phase of expansion. BAPIO Institute of Health Research has three journals to its credit. Harmony, consisting of news and events carried out by BAPIO members. Sushrita, focusing on health policy. And the academic journal, The Physician, which can be accessed internationally. These publications endeavour to provide a platform to doctors from minority sectors and to issues that get missed by the traditional journals. The article uh, we published in The Physician in, in early 2020 showed that uh, minority doctors were at two, two times higher risk of death from COVID. And we were the first to run that survey, understand the risk and demonstrate it in The, in the Physician uh, in early 2019, 2020. What we found at that stage and what happened subsequently is that NHS employers took ethnicity as an independent risk factor and therefore risk assessment uh, tools were developed which then allowed doctors at higher risk to be given additional protection uh, and reduce their vulnerability. We believe that that uh, article led to a significant policy change which then we believe saved many lives. To address the differential attainment in leadership roles amongst international graduates, thus delivering on its promise of training and excellence, BAPU started the Faculty of Leadership. The module equips international medics with practical tools to enhance their careers. We did a piece of work called Bridging the Gap 
and of that in that we found differential attainment in leadership roles was very high especially in the international medical graduates and one of the reasons was that they did not have access to leadership development they did not have any people there spend sponsoring or mentoring them so the bapio faculty of leadership is actually been born to address all of those um, issues and what comes to mind is the main thing that helped them was creating that psychological and cultural safety and that is what this leadership program is doing it is actually explaining to people you know what is psychological safety how can you make that doctor safe enough so that they feel they can actually express their opinions talk about the problems they are having because that's not the case with the black and ethnic minority doctors unfortunately because they actually don't speak up because they're scared they're worried and then they end up actually having a lot of problems a huge population of nhs professionals have their origins in india medics from black asian and ethnic minority groups that included the indians succumbed to the pandemic in large numbers reasons are many one of them being not having a strong voice bina british indian nurse association Yet another wing of Bapio was launched in August 2020 out of this very need. Most of the Indian nursing community people they work at the front line yeah during the covid crisis we had a lot of issues around the supply of PPEs yeah so they are under very high risk but their voice was not heard at the top level so we wanted some sort of association where it can voice about the difficulties faced by the front line indian nursing community and that's why we ended up forming bina when i work in itu i went through lots of mental depression i did not speak to anybody so what i do is i leave home very early like my work started 7:30 but i leave home like 6 even 5:45 i come in the car park i cry there hmm. i was fear of death to be honest like i was thinking there are lots of bme nurses and doctors they dying that's honest truth i sit there i said am i going to see my family am i going to see my daughter am i going to be alive and i did not touch her you know be with my children for like so many months so i was like uh, self isolating at home i live in a separate room my children and my husband will be in a separate room my daughter they like me to feed them at the it's not two years old at the time she was 10 year old she tells me mommy when you going to feed me i'm waiting for this i'm sorry about the language but that's what she say is to feed go to go away so so you can feed me and you know when you go out we hug them and we kiss, kiss them i want your hug and kiss i'm waiting for that is actually given that voice not just to those organizations and those nurses actually but gone in regionally and nationally and said to our chief nurse will you support us with this we're a big organization now and actually having bapio behind us and working alongside us it's been fantastic as bina took hold in the uk a severe crisis emerged in india India was struggling in the hands of second wave of the pandemic. Bapio organized oxygen concentrators and medical supplies in big numbers overnight. The request came through Bapio saying we've got concentrators, we've got so many different things that we need to be sent. How do we do it? And when I accepted, believe me, I didn't know what I was getting into. From the time that we brought Qatar Airways on to um the picture where they said okay we're giving you an empty flight for all the freight that you have me announcing that to bapio bapio started filling that up on ground we had a plan and the plan was that once it arrives we had phenolex industries helping us with all the duty and clearance and everything as you know the bureaucracy becomes too much but it happened within 3 hours so from the time that it left london went into doha with that halt came into uh, mumbai got clearances and everything within i would say 48 hours we were able to ensure that the concentrators reached where they should be 25 years since its inception bapio has come a long way 
Well, when I look back of 25 years, the first thing I get is feeling of satisfaction. The journey which started something very small, but my ambition and my vision at that time was to make Bapio an organization with influence and ability to help people. And uh, looking back, I think we have actually managed to come a long way. And I think it's a very professionally, very ethical uh, uh, organization. And it's quite the way it's grown. I don't think it would have grown if it had not made a difference to people's lives. What Bapio did is tackle something which everybody knew, but were either afraid or did not have the confidence to tackle head on. And that's what Bapio has done. And it has done it through its campaigns, through bringing people together, giving people like myself who came after Ramesh Ji the confidence of a better system and coming into a better system. And I have benefited from what they have done. The new generation who is going to come to next in, in, in this country will also benefit from the experience we bring. Bapio for me is friendship. Bapio for me is community. Bapio for me is opportunity. Bapio for me is continuity. Amazing. Some really moving stories captured in a very somber manner. The success of any production depends on the director. And it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce the person behind this, none other than, none other than Lavina Tendon, an award-winning journalist and documentary filmmaker of 20 years experience. She's a foreign broadcaster with uh, NDTV, but famous for her show called Chai Jet, Sky Channel 710. But today, Lavina, it is my turn to ask you the questions and you will be answering. So the tables what? have been. Absolutely. So to begin with, uh, it must have been a job to capture all these moving stories and to give a context uh, to all these stories in the current crisis. And given the challenges we are facing, how did you manage to overcome all the challenges and come up with something which is so wonderful? So um, the chat or the talk about the documentary started months and months ahead uh, of what we see today. And uh, in the lead up to that, I had huge conversations, long conversations first with Ramesh Ji, uh, who is the mind of, or rather the dictionary of Bapio, if I can say. He knows any and everything and rightly so as well. And when I was listening to it, uh, when I came as a journalist, I worked in India, but when I came in the UK, for Arch Tak, <laughs> India Today, then um, I, I, I knew about Bapio. But when I heard really the kind of work that they have been uh, doing um, for so, so long, I just thought that we can't just give facts. And in clearly, all these facts and statistics that we see actually are people. And so we need to tell the stories of this these people uh, whose life or who have been affected positively, affected positively by Papio. And that's exactly, I think, we tried to do. And I really hope that that has come through because Papio has touched lives. It has been incredible. The documentary is just incredible, Levina. And during your chat and during your interaction with so many people from Papio, uh, what did you enjoy most apart from having a chat with me now? <laughs> I remember having chat with you when we were filming as well. But what I have earned is what I'm going to tell you is that in our, uh, I come from India or uh, not without giving my age up, I'll say that doctor or engineer. 
So my parents tried that with me as well, sadly failed. Uh, but what I have earned talking to all of you is um, that I can call you by names, first names. <laughs> I could fathom, I couldn't fathom that in India that I could call a doc, a doctor by their names. I think it's been a delight to learn what journeys doctors have made here and the difference they are making to the lives of British people and everyone else of us living here. So much respect. Thank you, Lavina. You indeed have gen done justice to the contribution of members and the vision of Dr. Mehta to bring about in this documentary. And this leaves us with the legacy and something to remember, something to cherish. So a big thank you to you, uh, Lavina, for doing an in incredible work for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Uh, so while, what we can do now, we can now move on to the second uh, part of this documentary, which is called Sparkle of Light, which is not uh, about BAPIO journey, but is more about celebrating the achievements of uh, BAPIO. Uh, so we can have uh, uh, that documentary uh, visible now. Wow, it's 25 years of Bapio. It's amazing how time has flown since the very humble beginning of Bapio 25 years ago. I think we have come a long way. I feel so happy and I am so proud of our team, people who have been working with us all the time and bringing Bapio to such heights, making it one of the one of the most unusual but important and influential doctors organization in the world really but you know we started with very humble beginning it started at my house with very few people and we were wondering how we can assist at that time in 96 international medical graduates who were coming and were landing in london but we're not finding jobs and we're having a lot of difficulties. Since then, we have moved on for equality, fairness and justice for all international medical graduates, but also for ethnic minority doctors. I'm sure that when Ramesh and his colleagues planted the seed for Bapio all those 25 years ago, and you will be aware that this is our 25th uh, uh, or silver anniversary of the foundation of Bapio, I'm sure that they, they didn't actually think that this would become a mature tree that has blossomed into flowers and is bearing fruit. And I think that um, what my vision would be for Bapio would be that all our arm's length bodies, the uh, British Indian Nurses Association, Bapio Training Academy, uh, the um, Bapio Institute for Health Research uh, and Medical Defense Shield, all of them would flourish our faculties or our fora, of which there are several, the Young Doctors Forum, Leadership Forum, uh, and also the SAS Forum, that they all make inroads into, uh, into mainstream, uh, in mainstream NHS. The difficulties that we had with HSMP visa, we lobbied the government first. Since it did not work, we staged a protest march in front of number 10, where 700 of our doctors took part. Despite that, things did not work 
and hence we had no choice other than to take the government to the court and we went up to the supreme court then it was called the house of lords and we won it saved the careers of 15000 doctors many of them are now consultants working in the nhs i'm delighted that while we are celebrating the silver jubilee at bapio women have come a long way and women leadership and equality has come a long way in bapio women's forum has been established through which national conferences were organized we had role models come in and speak about their stories their journeys the sacrifices the pathways they've taken and this is all extremely uh, inspiring for young women doctors who want to take similar leadership roles and do the best in their careers networking pathways have been established within the conferences the important concepts of sponsorship lift as you go the awareness towards is has brought in and i must also say that bapio has been very active nationally in terms of promoting issues relating to ethnic women for example in terms of supporting the commission which was dealing with pay disparity gender pay disparity and also ethnic racial equality issues have all been supported to informed through bapio when we did the bridging the gap project one of the things we found was there's a lot of differential attainment in leadership roles and the one thing that they brought up as a part of the problem was the fact that they didn't have access to leadership development so we developed what was called leap which was leading through education to excellent patient care which is a leadership program that is cross disciplinary multi professional which aims to actually promote leadership development and collaborative working across the healthcare system and the idea is that you know you provide this uh, into individuals and give them that opportunity to develop as leaders this is what the bapio faculty of leadership is going to do so i'm really excited about its launch in 2021 bapio reaches its 25th year and in this time in the last 12 to 24 months the world has changed completely for us We are extremely proud of the fact that Papio has developed its own Institute for Health Research which was born in the middle of a pandemic and the founding uh, principles were our uh, pride and our aspiration for achieve, achieving equality for everyone and I think that was the that has been the mission for Papio all through its 25 years and the pandemic and the need for for equality um, it gave us the opportunity to develop our own research uh, institute in the last 12 months we have worked extremely hard and we have um, worked with multiple organizations and developed um, a huge amount of research looking at workforce looking at well-being looking at uh, at people who are Uh, you know here from other countries around the world and for populations here who have been really suffering because of um, um, many challenges that they have had and during this time we also are very proud of the fact that um, bapio journals have really taken on a global digital presence uh, the journals were developed back in 2007 for harmony uh, 2012 for sushruta um, and um and the physician at, at around the same time yet um in this last 2 years our readership has gone from around 5000 to 20000 um our reach has reached um really across the globe and we have uh, contributors from um australia from russia uh, and and many parts of india and england and through this uh, bapio has a uh, given voice to a lot of people with incredible talent who up till now did not have the chance to have their voice heard and we are really proud uh, in its 25th year that uh, bapio has achieved so much i'm particularly proud of bapio's bridging the gap project which has brought together 12 months of hard work of 150 people and 50 organizations this sort of work has never been done before 
and this was done under the Alliance for Equality of the Medical Profession and this is where BAPIO's mission for achieving equality for all um, has been brought to a culmination and we will be announcing our report shortly. Health and well-being is so important, you know, it, the BAPIO has really, really taken this uh, to a next level. We have got wonderful services to maintain the good health, energy and the positive energy that we have and our members have. It's not only they're just the members, it's extended to their families and friends so that everyone works and there's a sense of purpose and the community. This is something really we need to celebrate. In addition to this, what we are enjoying is a regular yoga sessions. They are done on a weekly basis and absolutely the members look forward to attend to those sessions. And we have a dance fitness sessions which keeps us really fit, energetic and have built a really good friendship and the network. And this is extended not just to the BAPU members, it's also welcome to everybody else. On the top of this, we do have a network and the relationship building with the other organizations in the form of a fund where we have a cricket team and they have done excellent and won trophies at the same time build such vast network amongst other organizations. Not only this, we do have additional support services called IPR project. This one has been benefited by so many young doctors, nurses and the doctors who were hit really hard during pandemic, not only in UK but in India as well. This peer support has brought in such an helpful resources to those doctors and the nurses as well. All in all, Papio's agenda on the health and well-being is a holistic approach looks at the physical, psychological, emotional and social well-being. This is very important in this profession to bring a good quality care and outcome for patient care in the NHS. And we are really proud to say how top is the agenda of health and well-being in BAPIO and this will be continuing forever. It's 25 years of BAPIO silver jubilee celebrations and we are so so proud of this organization i am particularly proud not only of bapio but of bapio training academy and what it has achieved in the last year or last couple of years one of the pillars of bapio was to promote clinical and professional excellence and bapio training academy finally is fulfilling that purpose is fulfilling the dream set out by dr ramesh mehta founder of bapio and we all should be proud about what we are trying to do with India, the rest of the world, making BAPU a global organization, BAPU Training Academy a global brand. Our training will not only benefit the trainees in India and UK, but also will benefit the countries where the trainees are being trained, India, United Kingdom, and will provide a platform where the world gets the benefit of these quality doctors being created through these programs serving the mankind. This is indeed a win-win for all and we all should be so proud of it. This is the only organization which has managed to do this, bringing so many stakeholders together, universities in India, universities in UK and of course the government. And I think this is a tremendous achievement and I'm very proud of it. The support offered to international doctors by traditional defence organisations has been very fragmented and unsatisfactory. So we set up Medical Defence Shield and in the last 10 years we've helped thousands of doctors in cases against the GMC and against their employers and we've helped save many, many careers. MDS which offers both trade union and defence organisation covers in one uh, subscription is an amazing product which has helped and continues to help doctors in this country and we hope that we will continue to grow with time. Our membership includes senior consultants and many many junior doctors and we have free membership for medical students as well so we are catering to all groups of society. British Indian Nurses Association was formed last year in the middle of the pandemic to provide the much needed support for Indian origin nurses 
when any nurse is coming from india they need a quality pastoral support to settle in their job furthermore they need good support to progress further in their professional career bina provides quality pastoral support as well as further professional support for nurses of indian origin in this country forming bina is the is one of the proudest moment in the history of papio because together along with the medical workforce we will be having a massive influence in the uk healthcare system for the benefit of our staff and for our patients these talented people we need to use their talent for the best patient care and unless we support them unless we encourage them unless we use their clinical and professional excellence we will not be able to use their talent and that has been the objective and i'm so pleased that we have done very well over the last 24 5 years all this hard work when we started wasn't possible because there was no workforce available to us we just few friends together and without support and the solid support that i had from my wife ritu this was impossible it's amazing can't believe bapio has completed 25 years since we started it's it has been a pleasant journey amazing journey and i thoroughly enjoyed supporting bapio especially the charity which bapio does i can recollect the earthquake in kutch the floods in south india and recently the covid crisis in india we collected lots of funds and helped them and i'm sure we would continue doing it as long as maybe more 25 years we were brought up to be compassionate and kind and these are qualities that resonate through all the work that bapio does integrity honesty and really being proud of who you are and being who you are as a doctor now myself these are qualities that i continue to uphold in my clinical practice so when i started medical school i didn't have any other family doing medicine but it wasn't until i was introduced to bapio and people like ramesh uncle and anku that i found people that were willing to mentor me and support me like my own family and give me the opportunities to teach me what i needed to do to get ahead of my career whether that was publication opportunities or presenting or teaching or even the highlight for me which was being able to be sponsored to go to India to present at a research conference there and attend a hospital attachment i feel this really kickstarted my career and i'm so proud of being able to um, pass these opportunities on to younger medical students now bapi has given us an amazing opportunity to mentor young junior doctors and medical students one of which was a fantastic opportunity where we created a international conference where hundreds of students and junior doctors from across Europe came to our national merit conference to learn new skills and present their work and all of their research that they've been doing during this time i first learned about bapio as a second year medical student and at the time i wasn't sure what bapio could offer me but i'm so glad i took that first step and became a bapio member firstly leadership There's so many inspiring people within Bapio and they're so eager to help. Research. There's so many projects that you can become involved with with within Bapio. So many consultants and professors so eager to take on medical students and junior doctors. Medical education. This is always to hand, be that as a medical student or as a junior doctor. Now Bapio is a family made up of medical students right through to consultants. Everyone is always happy to help. and will take you with open arms. Bapi is a really inspiring organization to be a part of as a medical student. It's allowed me the opportunity to network with multiple different students from across the UK as well as meeting consultants in many different specialties. As well as this, I've had chances to form research, um have things published. Um I've experienced many different medical lectures which have been inspiring and as well as that, they provide opportunities to have a sponsorship to go abroad which is great as well. going forward and for the future i see women undertaking very important roles within bapio at the top table at all levels and in terms of equality and diversity we plan to continue to help support and professionally encourage doctors of 
all walks of life. So looking to the future, I'm keen to show other people the support and the warmth and the family feeling that Bapier has provided with me. I want other people to know about that and so they can experience the same opportunities that I've received. So I'd encourage all the young junior doctors and medical students to come and get involved in the Young Doctors Forum at Bapio and take advantage of all the opportunities that we have, including the National Merit Conference and all the lovely socials that we have, to get together and take advantage of the opportunities and support that we have to offer. The future of Bapio is, in my opinion, is very simple. Bapio has to be a major stakeholder in policy making as far as Department of Health is concerned. That's where BAPU needs to sit. That is a natural, deserving place for BAPU. We need to carry on. A lot more needs to be done. And we will carry on doing the good things, supporting the National Health Service, supporting the patient care, supporting the doctors and nurses towards clinical and professional excellence. Tremendous achievements, amazing. In a short span of time, what BAPIO and its arm lens bodies have achieved is just incredible. The genius behind uh, directing this documentary or preparing this documentary is none other than Pranuti Jadav. She's a director of any graphics creative ad agency, but she's also involved in a lot of charity work. She is president of Lions Club of Coventry. So a very warm welcome to you, Pranuti. Thank it you must, very much, Prath. What must have been a challenge to prepare a documentary on the back of the main documentary and giving it a different context in terms of uh, achievements? And did you run the risk of duplication and how did you manage to avoid that? Absolutely. Actually, that was uh, as, uh, you know, the previous the documentary was already in going on and we had a challenge of creating a celebratory video when Ramesh ji came to us and uh, you know when Ramesh uncle he, uh, he, Ramesh Mehta ji when he came to me and said that uh, we need to uh, create this celebratory video there was a challenge of duplication of course because uh, uh, the already the, already the documentary was going on and we had to create a, a totally different content but Bapio's 27, 25 year old journey, journey, we had to depict and we had to tell. It was an honor to go through the whole lot of uh, four pillars and going through the uh, stories that we have seen it on the main documentary as well, which we, we thought, okay, we, let's go for just the celebratory part of it. What are the achievements? What are the milestones uh, of 25 years? Uh, and then put that and concise it into a 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, that was a challenge, and um, but we loved it. We loved the, every bit of it. Uh, thanks to uh, Ramesh Mehta, Dr. Ramesh Mehta, and Dr. Saras as well. Both of them thoroughly uh, sort of worked with us and uh, gave us the whole lot of uh, content, the images, and all of you, the, all the doctors um, as well, helping us. Uh, you know, with the with, and we had a good time on the shooting as well. Thank you. I'm sure you had good time, and I'll t t tell me. Honestly speaking, when we were facing the cameras, it's, it can be very awkward, <laughs> but it has come out very, very well. And I'm not saying it because I feature in the documentary, but it has really come out very well. And I think people have been uh, able to highlight the achievements and the impressive work they have been doing for the last so many years, especially like uh, BHI, BIHR uh, during pandemic and so on and so forth. Uh, so are you proud of what you have produced now and what are your how do we take it further absolutely uh, I, I might have come from a 35 doctors family so you can imagine i got uh, this discussions going on all the time in the house and uh, we my, my husband my uh, you know he also has sort of fought the case as well and uh, he knows exactly what bapio is doing for the community for the doctors and for the nurses is a tremendous 
with the chairman, which is need to be honored and need to be told to the people that this 25 years, what Mafio has achieved. So it is, it was quite close to my heart, um, you know, uh, to do the documentary and to do the celebration. It was really a sort of a um, um, thing that which I wanted to do as well. So it was not just for the sake of I did the documentary uh, for the sake of it. No, it was it was like, it was like my work, my own thing. So, yeah. And you so, didn't have any choice, Pranati. Nobody says no to Dr. Mehta. So, <laughs> Absolutely. He says do it. You have to do it. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, That's a big true. thank you to you. Thank you very much for producing this and doing justice to the achievements. Thank you very much. Pranati. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. We now come to the last segment of this uh, documentary launch, a premiere launch, which is Bapio Song. And I think at this point, I would like to introduce my colleague and inspiring figure, Dr. Saras Hosurga, uh, for whom medicine is a hobby, but actually her heart is in the art and the culture and so on and so forth. And she has recently produced a Kannad film in India, which is an award winning, winning film. So, uh, Saras, it could only be you who could have thought about this Bapio song. So tell us about this whole journey about Bapio song. Thank you very much, Farag. Uh, it's such a uh, wonderful moment we felt. Uh, we, we wanted to celebrate Silver Jubilee in a, a special way. In addition to the documentaries and the videos, what we have watched so far, we wanted to add a little bit more, another touch to this in the form of a song and the music. As everyone really loves songs and the music, and also it, it's a powerful tool to express the values and the journey and also the cultures of both the countries and the ethos that we all hold as doctors. So it was a, such a great moment to express all that in just two and a half to three minutes. So it's incredibly challenging to incorporate the uh, excellent music, which has been given by music director Sanjay R.A. from Bangalore. He has worked with A.R. Rahman. And then comes the lyrics. When it was coming to the lyrics, we start, we thought, and obviously it's all the feedback from the BAPU members and many other doctors and the nurses to say uh, we should be starting with the something that we are really coming to the roots back home in India. So we started with the Sanskrit shloka. The meaning of that shloka comes from, may all be happy, may all be prosperous, free from diseases, illness, and sorrows. So that is pretty much the ethos of even the doctors. So we wanted to bring that in, followed by that, the, uh, the journey of uh, all of us and also the celebrations that we do. So the lyrics were composed by uh, Mr. Karthik Sargur, who is also a famous director back in uh, India. And then comes the lyrical video, which is going to come after this, is done beautifully by Ravi Aradhya. Again, it's a team from uh, back from Bangalore. Then the, comes the most important part is the singers. We wanted to mark this again, a combination of uh, India and the UK. And this is why we have brought in really nicely. I, I really feel proud about it. And the singers, the main singers are Naveen Kundra, who is very well attached to Bapio. And you have seen his pictures in the other uh, video earlier on. And Dr. Setu Warrior, he's a pediatrician, and he has got immense, uh, I would say, passion, knowledge about the music and the songs. So there's a lot of contribution from him. And then Dr. Asmita Sain, who is a GP uh, based in Newcastle. So these were the main three singers from UK. And we have some Indian singers called Haston Rodriguez, Sumati Shekhar, Joy Elvin Dinakar, so they have done a fantastic job in singing as well. So when it comes to the song and the uh, um, Bapya song, it's a combination of the lyrics, music and the singing. And then comes the video. What you'll be seeing is a video editing with the all members in being there. So it was incredibly challenging to fit all this in two and a half minutes. So and I really feel that you all will like it. And uh, it's a great team effort. And this is one piece I can say definitely a Bapio stands out as a teamwork when you see this video. Thank you, Saras. So I was not wrong when I said that this premiere is no less than Bollywood premiere. 
So shall we hear it out now, the song, Bap your song? Please, thank you. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschit Dukkha Bhar Bhavetu From East to West to build a nest We forged on a hope With a seal full of love And eyes full of dreams But a thousand challenges to overcome Waiting to embrace To nurture the grace And create on the mask of the tent Take away the pain of countless souls and names With Bapio, our own Bapio With Bapio, our own Bapio With Bapio, our own Bapio and hearts We unfurl this flat pride A boon of promise and a pillar of strength The power that always guides With Bapio Our own Bapio With Bapio Our own Bapio With Bapio Our own Bapio Wow, I mean, absolutely amazing. Saras, a job you have done is absolutely brilliant. And Bapu has just this amazing pool of talent. And Bal Bollywood is not far. And this is something which leaves us literally mesmerized. So on that note, I would now like to invite our chair, Professor J.S. Bamra, to give a formal vote of thanks. J.S. continues to inspire us all continues to ensure that we are all doing what we are supposed to do. And here you go, JS, over to you. It always helps to unmute, isn't it? But uh, listen, Parag and Tendak, I think you've got an alternative career. Absolutely amazing how you've managed to compare us through this wonderful journey of Papi. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, mine is the evil task. So this 25-year journey has been captured so well in the documentary, followed by Sparkle of Light and that wonderful song that you've just heard. Now, all of this should strike a chord with you because these terminal moments must be reminiscent of your own journey or the journey of your parents or your colleagues through the NHS from coming as migrants from India to here. The pain, the loss, the gains, the celebrations, the highs and lows of the medical migrants who came here to the NHS to serve the country, who formed 40% of the medical workforce from all over the Asian subcontinent and from Africa. And that journey must never be forgotten. So the seed that Ramesh Mehta sowed 25 years ago with a handful of friends is now a thriving tree. And on the shoulders of these giants 
and the grand steward stands up here, an organization that hopefully will last, last not just another 25 years, as Rituji said, but 250 years and beyond. And now I, it falls on me at the wonderful task of thanking all these lovely people, talented people, these geniuses, as Parag was saying, who've made this event possible. So a huge thanks goes to Lavina Tandon, Pranothi Patil Jadav of Anigraph's Productions, Saras Hosberger, and also her colleagues, Sanjay Karthik, Ravi, Navin Kundra, who's a darling of Papio and everybody else, Setu Marihal, Asmita Sam, Hamid Gupta, Biju Simon, Parag Singhal, of course, again, uh, Sanjay, Sunny Seti, Scott, and Kavya of Virtual Studio, who made this uh, possible to come through you through YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you've watched it, through the virtual studio. And as Ramesh said, wish this could have been physical, but second best is virtual, keeps us all safe. And I also, on behalf of Ramesh and our executive committee, we want to thank all the members and friends of BAPIA who've contributed to the success of this event. And more importantly, now personally, I want to thank Ramesh Mata, our founder and the pioneers of BAPIA, to whom we all owe a huge debt of gratitude. Thank you, folks. I hope you will watch this again and again because there's so much in this that we've captured through the wonderful journey that I think will resonate, as I said, with all of you. Thank you very much indeed.